can do it's another day hallelujah another beautiful day in the presence of the lord our god is worthy to be praised to be adored and to be worshipped you are worthy lord jesus thank you for another day hallelujah we give you praise we give you glory oh god no one like you jesus it's another day and we give god our god all the praise you are the god that killeth. you are the god that makes us alive hallelujah no wonder god you are the lion lord yet you are the lamb of god that died for the souls of men you are God alone, Jesus. We worship you this morning. In our life, come and do what only you can do, Lord. You are my glory. You are my glory, Lord. You are the lifter up of my head, Jesus. Demons tremble, Lord. At the mention of your name, Abba Father. You are the God of thunder, Lord. You are the God of fire, Lord Jesus. Come and do, Lord, what only you can do, Lord. You are the mighty man of war, Father. We give you praise. We bless your name. There is none like unto thee. Hallelujah to your name, King of glory. Thank you for watching over us through the night. Thank you for ushering us into another beautiful day. Today is a beautiful day, the 12th of October. Our God is faithful we are giving him praise we bless his holy name there is none like him father lord we give you praise el shaddai we worship you there is none like unto thee be exalted oh god be glorified oh lord you are worthy of our praise in the name of jesus we give god praise for his continued mercy that has never failed they are new every morning great is his faithfulness towards us for all of our ways are before the Lord our God he's never abandoned us he's always been there for us the Bible says as a father pities his own children oh that is how our heavenly father pities us he remembers our frame he knows our weaknesses he has never abandoned us and that is the kind of father he is and we are thanking him once again father we thank you for your gift of today we thank you for strength renewed vigor you have renewed our strength you have caused us to go forth and we are here oh god giving you praise for another day blessed be your name father and i want to thank you for the life of everyone hearing us today i want to thank you god for the life you have given to them i want to thank you god for your mercy i want to thank you for your kindness to them i want to thank you for giving them another opportunity to hear your word another mercy is extending another grace is flowing and father i thank you for those of them in un under under some desperate situation i thank you because this morning you are intervening in their life father blessed be your holy name lord in the mighty name of jesus our god is faithful i thank him for the life of every one of us yes we give him praise we give him worship he alone is the giver of life if he holds back his life we die <laughs> if he releases his hands good things flow and I'm sure that good things are gonna flow in case there is something that you are still expecting trust the Lord he give it all good things to enjoy in the name of Jesus but I will thank you we are here once again as we keep on declaring the word of God we speak for the word it enters into the atmosphere it enters into the land it penetrates to everywhere we the enemy has brought restrictions we break the hold of darkness and we declare the word of god we have been looking at the topic god's will for us we began it yesterday after our thanksgiving on monday we thank god and gave him praise for all he's doing in our life and we began god's will for us we began it yesterday today is wednesday the 12th of october and god has been faithful you are looking at god's will for us we, we are able to establish yesterday that god has a will for us despite all the enemy plans against us he has a will for us we looked at it yesterday if you missed anyone if you missed any part of that yesterday please 
just go back and look at it. It's there on Facebook, YouTube, there, LinkedIn, and every other social media we have. And I tell you something, you're going to be a blessing for you to discover that God has a plan for you. He has his will and his purposes for you. And the thing that is so beautiful about this is that God said, my will shall come to pass as I have determined it. That is how it's going to be as I have planned it. That is how it's going to stand. Now, we made declarations yesterday because there are works of wickedness that want to frustrate what God has. And I want to give a, a, a very short story. Tell this short story that, that really happened about a woman. That woman was looking for the fruit of the womb for years. For years, he, she was waiting for the Lord to answer her. You know, no medical thing could avail. And then she took in. To the glory of God, she became pregnant, and the word of the Lord came to this woman while she was pregnant of her baby boy, the only child she ever had. And the word of God told her, she said that this baby is a great child. He's going to be a leader. A lot of people will look up to him. He will be a great leader. And then the woman gave birth to that baby. She gave birth to that baby and the baby began to grow. And at a particular stage as a toddler, he began to, you know, have several uh, convulsions and seizures, you know, and it came to a point where he was deformed. He began to look as if he was, you know, retarded. And that boy grew and couldn't take care of himself. And it, it, that situation lingered, lingered. And when he was about 36 years old, 36 year old man who is still dependent, who couldn't even get anything. He couldn't go to school. He couldn't. He was just dependent. You know, imagine that. You know, and it became very obvious because you look at the child, look at that boy God spoke about. You know, God speaks his word. He watches over his word to bring it to pass. But there comes a time when the plans of the enemy seems to prevail in the life of the people. We are looking at God's will for us and how we have to make sure that will of God comes to pass by playing our part. I want to read the scripture before I read the scripture we have for today. And I'm reading it from the book of Proverbs chapter 15 verse 32. Never forget this scripture if you really intend to mean anything in life. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 32. The Bible says, He that refuses instruction despises his own soul. He that refuses instruction, he is actually despising his own soul. But he that heareth reproof, geteth understanding. There is an instruction that God has. The Bible says if you refuse it, you are despising your very soul. Now, that instruction is what will lead us towards the will of God for us. The enemy actually fights against the will of God for us. You won't see him actually coming to confront you, but he will want you to reduce your prayer life. He will want you to involve in immorality. He will want you to involve in a life of sin. And before you know it, you are not walking in the path that will bring the will of God to pass. We are looking at God's will for us and also how to deviate from the path that makes the the will of God incapacitated. That woman, she became careless. She kept on praying and praying and trusting God for the baby. When the baby came, she got the baby and she became careless about it. Instead of sustaining what she has gotten through the way that she got it. Instead of continuing to pray, my baby, God has spoken concerning you. This is what God said concerning you. You're going to be a great leader. People are going to look up to you. Instead of waiting and remaining in the place of prayer, she became reluctant she began to play around oh i've got a baby i can now relax and the devil hit her and though she had a baby she had sorrow of heart because she will see the age mates of the same child who has grown to be a man yet he was still dependent he couldn't do anything to himself what a mockery what a way the devil wants some of your life to look like i don't know how long it has been that you are delayed from the places god has promised and said that this is what he has 
has for you. You are going to say, Lord, in whatever way I have deviated, it may look as if it is late, but it's never too late with God. God can turn any situation around. If you can say, Lord, so this is your will for me. You wish above all things that I prosper and be in health as my soul prospers, but the devil has brought distraction. He has brought wrong friends. Somebody, it was the wrong friends you have, the bad friends you have that influenced you out of the way of righteousness and you have deviated from the will of God from your life. You're going to repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry for moving away, for moving away from the path of righteousness. And now look at how my life is. If you can repent, I tell you, the God of miracle can mend your life and still bring you back to purpose. This is a word because somebody that hates instruction have already registered that he doesn't want reproof. That means he likes to be destroyed. The Bible says he that refuses instruction despises his own soul. That means the wreckage of eternity, not only in time, is, is actually what the enemy targeted for somebody who has refused instruction. Today, if you can hear this instruction, I want to let you know that God's plan will still come to pass in your life. Now I want to read the scripture we have for today. It's from the book of Jeremiah chapter 29. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jeremiah 29. We're going to read verse 11 and we're going to read verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 29 is a very popular scripture. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. That is the Lord is speaking here. I know the thoughts that I think. So as God is, he will be thinking about you. Come on now. He'll be thinking about me, my Jesus. I know the thoughts that I think. And now God does not think like men because when men think their thoughts, they will just be thinking, ah, this is my boy. I just wish he gets admission into the university. I just, I just, I'm just thinking. No, it's not the kind of thinking of how am I going to get this done? God's thinking is actually his plans. He's thinking. It's not as if he's thinking on how he's going to come to pass. He's actually meditating on the plans he has for you. God said that this plan, says the Lord, thoughts of peace. That means anything that has no peace in it is not part of God's will. And there is a family right now going through turmoil. We speak the will of God, which is the peace of God in that home. The husband is hurting. The wife is in pain. Right now we speak. Speak peace right now. Woman, receive the peace of God. We rebuke that storm in your family right now. It is the will of God for peace to reign in that home. We begin to cut off any link that is bringing that disharmony in that home. In the name of Jesus, let the peace of God reign in Jesus' name. God said he has the thoughts of peace for you. The Bible says thoughts of peace. And not of evil. That evil is the word for calamity. Hey! He said he does not have such a plan. Calamitous events, circumstances, you receive a call and it's a bad news. God said that is not the plan I have for you. He said it's to give you an expected end, to give you a future, to give you a hope. And that is why we are now rebuking every other manifestation that is not in line with God's plan for you. God says is a thought of peace. It's peace starting from your heart. You know, when you have peace in your heart, it doesn't matter what happens around you. It doesn't matter what is happening. You can look and just smile, knowing that God, you remember that the Bible says that Jesus told his disciples, let us go over to the other side. And when they came, when they were on their way to the other side, the Bible says he was sleeping in the pillow. You know, I wonder, sometimes the Bible says Jesus will pray all night. He will pray all night. And then sometimes very early in the morning, he will pray when it's still dark. He has finished preaching now. They have ministered to the crowd of the people. They were moving to the other side. So he was taking that time to have a nap. You can imagine that. And while he was sleeping, the Bible says, there arose a storm. And the storm was beating.
beating against the ship to the extent that the disciples being fishermen, they know, they understand the water body and they were all trying to do all they can. But they discovered that this is not an ordinary situation. This is not an ordinary trouble. We know storms, but this one is targeted as swallowing us up. We see ourselves that our life is in jeopardy. What is going on? They tried all they could and they saw that they were going nowhere because there is a force of evil behind that storm. And they came to a point they have to wake up Jesus. Jesus was sleeping in the pillow and the water was beating against it. That means the water was touching his body. You can imagine that. Yet he was sleeping so peacefully. What a peace. What a description of a peace. When God says that the thought he has for us is the thought of peace. It doesn't mean that there will be no situation that will rise. It's that God will give you peace right in the midst of that storm and what is more, that storm, whatever it is looking for, it will go back with a failed assignment. And that is why we are declaring every assignment of the devil, every program of hell targeted against our children, against our home you know what is gonna go back with the failed assignment in our life in the name of jesus the bible says god's thoughts are thoughts of peace so receive peace right now for every troubled soul it is the will of god for you to have peace and i want to pause at this point and say that when we look at god's will for us it is not for everybody even though God really has plans that those in sin will return back to him. God has his purposes that those that live in unrighteousness and live in sin will turn from their evil ways. Still, the plans he has are for those that are obeying him, for those who have rejected him, for those who are proving stiff-necked, for those who say, uh-huh, I, I, I have my own plans apart from the plans you have for me. What will God do? He will not force himself on you. He said, all day long I have stretched my hands to the rebellious children. I have been calling you all day. I have stretched my hands towards you all day. You have chosen your own way. This will of God for us is for those who have decided to follow his will. And it's not for those who will live a life of rebellion, who will live a life of sin, and still come to claim the promises. You know, we, 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 we live in a generation that is really... That is really, <laughs> it's humorous to, to watch there. It's, it's amusing, as in, it's, it's not funny. But it, 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 you can imagine someone living in sin and claiming the Holy God to be on his side. When he said, I am of a purer eye than to, be, to behold iniquity. I can't look upon sin. Even the Bible talks about the angels that cannot even tread in some places because of the iniquitous activities that go on there. Yet, these people live in sin and still claim that God is by their side. This will of God we are talking about is for those who chose to follow in the path. We said something yesterday that there is this target, the enemy targets against the people of God who choose to do the will of God. He tries to make things hard for us sometimes. He tries to make it look hard. You know, you remember when they, Jesus, uh, Jesus, the Bible says he has fasted for 40 days. He has ended the fasting. He was hungry. Hungry, of course, when you fast. After the end of the fasting, you'll be hungry. And of course, you are now expected to eat. You are required to eat. And that was when the devil came. The devil came to him and said, if you are the son of God, you are hungry. Command these stones to be prayed. You know, Jesus Christ said, yes, I finished fasting. Food is supposed to come. And if there is no food at this time, I can command. I can, after all, I'm the son of God. I can command things to flow. He chose to submit himself to the will of God. And the devil tries to make things difficult for people of God that are walking properly and walking orderly, expecting them to turn away and turn aside from the will of God, from the counsel of God. Now, how do you continue to be faithful to God 
when the devil throws things at you, when he wants you to fall, when he wants you, you know, and it looks as if those that are compromising, those that are disobeying God, seems to be having it easier. That's why the Bible said, narrow is the way that leads to life. There is really a life in obeying God. And the Bible said, narrow is that way that leads to life. And there are few that finds it, few that walk steadily, steadily on that path. But the other way is the easy way. You can just lie, you know, and get it so easy. You can falsify figures. It doesn't matter. You know, you can just do things. And many people are following that way. That is why so many people are not walking according to the will of God. And when it happens, like that we mentioned yesterday, that the Lord have decided to release his help for those that are working properly. Remember Shadrach, Bishak, and Abadnego, they stand today and forever as a testimony for those who refuse to bow to the cajole of the devil. Just bow down. They say we will not bow. King, we will not bow to this your image. Images that people are bowing to for them to have fame, for them to have one thing or the other. They say we are not going to bow. We are not going to bow. And what happened? We saw God show up for them. It may look as if God showed up late. Why didn't God come up before it became that late? Why didn't God come up before that time? Why would he wait? Why would he wait? Until they have been bound. The Bible said they bound them. They have closed even their hearts. They are to bound. They bound them. And God was watching. How someone that was faithful. Who refused to compromise. How they were binding them. And the situation is restricting them. And they said. I'd rather die. In standing for righteousness. Than to compromise. What a life. You know, when you compromise, your life becomes cheap. When you compromise, your life becomes value valueless. You have reduced the value out of your life. That is why when you come back to God in repentance, repentance actually adds value back in your life. Repentance actually begins to add back what the enemy has cheapened. You know, some girls, they call them cheap girls because they can easily get them. As they're making passes, they're already turning. As you are just trying to, they're already there. But there are those that will insist and say no. You know, these people have more value. And those that are so cheap. And you know, when you compromise, you lose your value. You become valueless. The devil messes up your life. But as you are holding on, you know, it is better that you stand and die for what is righteous than for you to compromise and get something cheap that tomorrow you will regret. All those things you are compromising to get, you'll find out at the end of the day that they are not worth it. They are not worth it. But we saw how these boys, they stood and said, even if God doesn't show up, he told the, they told the king, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from this fairy furnace and from your hand. But in case he chooses not to, in case he didn't just appear, maybe angels will appear. They don't know how God is going to come. In case it doesn't come yet, for me, I will not bow. And God is looking for those who will hear the instruction and say we are not bowing in this generation. We are not compromising with the multitudes that are compromising. We will hold on and stand on. These are the people God is coming for. They are the people God is releasing supernatural intervention. I tell you, these are the people God is showing up for. You cannot compromise and still come and pray and expect God to know, oh God, oh no, who do you take God for? He's a holy God. Remember when uh, Cain brought his own sacrifice. The Lord rejected it. He rejected it because his life was not straight. He had some things. God said, if, if you do well, you'll be accepted. So people are not doing well. They are doing evil. They are doing calamities. And they still want God to accept them. God said, repent. And this word again is going for somebody again. You know, how long will God talk to you? 
Don't be a king. Jesus, God kept speaking to him. He was the first one I found from the scriptures that God ever preached to. God ever talked to. God spoke to him and spoke to him. Not once, not twice. Several times God spoke to Cain. Even before he committed the act. And after he committed, God still came and spoke to him. And do you know what? He still refused to take instruction. The Bible says he that refuses instruction. We read it in the book of Proverbs 15 verse 32. He despised his own soul. And that is how uh, Cain was used as a reference point in the negative. Way down to the, in the book of Jude, the gospel of Jude, he was called uh, the way of Cain. How can your way be referred to an evil way? Because you are insisting on your, uh, on your ways that are rebellious. But today, if you can change, you can be referred as people whom we are called out of the way of evil, the way of rebellion, the way of iniquity, and return back. There are people, people like Rahab, yes, she was a harlot, professional one. Even the king knows her. She was so bad in her profession. But she turned a new leaf, and God gave her a brand new life. That is the testimony of what God wants to do. But if you keep on rejecting the counsel of God, I tell you, you will be valueless. The value that is supposed to add to your life, you reduce it every time you indulge in sin. And as we conclude in this, God is releasing something upon the faithful. The way that storm was hitting, and Jesus rose up. When they told him, don't you care we perish? Yes, God cares the situation. Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart He's touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long night looks dreary. Yet he cares. He rose and rebuked the storm. God is about to rebuke every storm coming against you because you are walking in the path of righteousness. And the devil is arranging circumstances for you to compromise. Be still and know that I am God. The Bible says, let me conclude in this. Jeremiah 29, we read 11. Now we are reading the concluding verse 12. The Bible says, then shall you call upon me. And you shall go and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you. We are about to pray. We are about to pray. The circumstances. And situations that have hit us so hard. Circumstances and situations that looked as if, how do we do? The Bible says the disciples have to wake up Jesus. They woke him up and said, do not care that we perish. The Bible said, then you shall call upon me. And you shall go and pray. To call upon the Lord is to pray unto him. The Bible says he will hearken unto you. He said, if you seek me, you shall seek me and find me when you search with me with, with, for me with all your heart. God expects you to say, Lord, I'm searching your will in this situation. I have seen ourselves in desperate situations, so desperate sometimes. And when we began to seek the Lord, we now began to find out the wisdom of God, even in the midst of that situation. There are some things you were expecting to change, change. And God said, seek me in the midst of this situation. You will find out my will out of it all somebody the will of god is that in that situation that you are gone or search out his will you may think that is 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 is, is a demotion is 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 a a, a, a redirection it, it is out of the path that you wanted but god says seek me as you call upon me in prayer find out my purposes he will make it known to you he said you will search me and find me when you search for me with all your heart, don't be faint hearted. Say, Lord, I have made up my mind. I am seeking your will. I am looking for your purposes. And it doesn't matter how difficult it may be. Easy is the way that leads to destruction. Broad is the way. Anything is permitted. Anything is allowed. But narrow is the way. You have to 
Restrict yourself as you continue in this narrow road and trust the Lord. I am the among the children of light. My life is reflecting the light of the glory of heaven. I display the glory of God by the way I live. And as you continue in that, you're going to pray and say, Father, I receive strength. I know your will for me, the will of good and purposes and plans of good and not of evil. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 14, as I have planned it, that is how it's going to come to pass. That plan that God has for you that is written down, forever settled, is going to come to pass. And no matter all the suggestions of the devil, no matter all the conspiracies of the enemy, no matter the div- ideas the devil is devising against you, none of them will come to pass. You're going to say, Father, I commit myself to you. Somebody, you need to receive grace. And I remember now, the Lord said, pray for somebody whose children are becoming rebellious. They are becoming wayward. Stay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I remember clearly, the Lord mentioned about a particular family whose children are growing, they are growing, and now they are turning to rebellious ways. Father Lord, we use that family as a point of contact. That's a godly family, a Christian family. A family is supposed to be an example. And right now the children are growing up and the enemy is arranging wayward ways for them. Father, we use that family right now as a point of contact to every Christian home. Every home the enemy is attacking the children. We rebuke you, devil, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray right now for divine intervention over that home right now in the name of Jesus, whatever subtle thing the enemy has introduced in the life of those children, we command it to be disintegrated right now. We ask in the name of Jesus that everything the enemy has sponsored into their life be dissolved right now. We speak peace in the name of Jesus. We ask that they come back to the value of the path they have been raised in the name of Jesus. I hear the Lord say, I'm giving joy to the heart of those fat parents because your children are coming back to the path of righteousness. Thank Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise for that testimony and we pray that goes for every family undergoing serious challenge because of the wayward ways of their children. They are coming home. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The hands of the devil is broken in the name of Jesus. I want you to know very clearly it is God's will. It is God's plan that you Raise the children and they continue in that path. He said, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, what happens? He will not depart from it. They will not depart. So the plans of the enemy for them to depart, they go out out there and they live a different life. They come in back home. They live a different life. The Lord said they will not depart. And the plans of the enemy for them to depart, it will not hold in the name of Jesus. We want to pray as we conclude. Today is already blessed. We have already pronounced the blessings of God. And today is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice. We are glad in it. You will not sorrow. You will not be, you will not be saddened. Circumstances and situations will not work against you. The Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God. And that will be your portion. And so we lift up our voice and counsel every demonic plan. Surely they shall gather, says the word of the Lord. But every gathering that is not gathered for us will fall for our sake. So we declare that every gathering of the wicked falls down today in the name of Jesus. Father, go ahead of your people. Make every crooked place straight. Release your blessing. Encourage that faithful person who is waiting on you to show up. They are waiting to get a better job and they are waiting upon you. They refuse to compromise. Father, thank you for showing up for them today. Blessed be your name. I give you praise for that testimony and I thank you for that family that you have restored the children back to you. Be exalted. Today is a beautiful day. You go forth and show forth the greatness of the Lord in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Have a beautiful day in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.